This video is the first of the series that will demonstrate how to generate the UN EDIFACT EDI message in C Sharp with the framework EDI component. The implementation guideline we will be following is the US Customs and Border Protection Implementation Guideline for Airlines, UN EDIFACT PACS List message. First thing we need to do is to find out what CEF file to use in our program for this message. We can determine that by viewing the specifications of the UNH segment. So let's scroll down to that page. We see that the message identifier is PACS list. The message type version is D. And the message type release number is 05B. Therefore, this guideline is based on the PACS list message version D05B. So that will be the CEFA we will use. Okay, so here's the PACS list D05 CEF file, which I've opened with the CEF manager. Next thing we have to do is edit it so that it will match with the guideline. First, let's change the information header of the CEF file so that we can differentiate it from a generic published version by adding the association code IATA as depicted in the guideline. Now let's find the page with the message overview. Here it is. This page shows all the segments that are being used. So in our CEF file, let's change the user requirements for all segments that are not in the guideline to not used. For example, this DTM segment is not in the guideline, so I'll set it to not used by pressing the Control Q key. This CDA segment is also not used, so I'll do the same. Let me pause the video while I make the changes to all the other segments. Okay, that's done. Another important thing to notice about this message is that it has two NAD loops in the same area and level, which would make it impossible for the current version of Freddy to differentiate between the two. So before we can proceed, we would have to make a modification to the CEF file to separate these NAD loops into their own area. So I'm going to open the CEF file with a text editor. And then in the dot set section, I'm going to find the second NAD loop and put a caret sign before it to denote a start of a new area. That's it. Let me save this file and bring it up with the Ceph Manager. Okay, now we see that this NAD is in area one while well, this one is in area 2. Okay, now that's done. We can actually start programming to generate the PACS list EDI file. So let's do that. Let's open our programming language, start a new project, name it C Sharp Gen PACS list, then reference the Freddy component. and then create a button to execute our EDI generation procedure. Now we can begin coding. To get us started, let's run the source code maker in the Ceph file to create the code that will give us a base to start. So from the menu, select Tools, then Source Code for C-Sharp.net, then Source Code to Generate, and then click OK. OK, so here's the code. First, I'm going to copy only the main procedure. And then paste it into our program's Generate button click procedure. I'll then copy the rest of the procedures to the program.
OK. Now let's modify the program a bit. Let's add the EDI Dev Framework EDI namespace. Next, let's specify a path where our Ceph file and EDI file will be located. I'll create a variable SPath for it. I'll also fix the variable's EDI file name and Ceph file name by removing the fixed path in them. Then I'll add SPath variable to the load schema method where the Ceph file gets loaded. And I'll do the same to the save method where the EDI file gets created. Let me also put a message box at the end to tell us when the program is done. Before we compile this program, let's check the configuration manager. Let's change the settings from any CPU to x64. OK, let's close this. One more thing before we compile the program, we have to add the area number 2 in the hierarchical string for the second NAD segment to differentiate it from the NAD segment in area 1. So I'll copy this string so that I can do a search for all occurrences below this point. And replace it with the following string with the area number 2. I'll click on the replace button and continue clicking on it until I reach the end of the code. OK, I think I had reached the end of the code. Let me close this and save the program, and then build it. OK, no errors. Now let's run it. It's done. Let's check the folder for the EDI file. And here it is. Let's open it with a text editor. And that's it. Our first EDI file creation. Our program was quick and dirty, so the data in the EDI file does not make sense right now. But at least we can make out the general structure of the EDI file. In our next video, I'll show you how to clean up the program to create a more valid EDI file.